Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeremiah, J Man Monero, J Man Speaks. We're coming to you live and in person with J Man's Ed Talks number nine. We're here with Jennifer Busetic from the greater capital region of New York State. <sighs> Round of applause. Live studio audience is applauding for her as well. Um, today, we're talking about leadership, committee involvement, and volunteering. So, if, if you got the email on this, I called it leadership schmeadership. <laughs> but I'm trying to get your attention. But let, let's just start in the beginning, I guess. First, introduce yourself for anybody who might not know who you are, where you're from, positions held, and then kind of how you got started. So um, I'm Jen Busetic for, from uh, upstate New York. And if you're from New York, and I guess anything north of the Tappan Zee qualifies as upstate. If you're from uh, real upstate, then I'm central New York. But I'm about 15 miles north of the capital, Albany, New York. And I have been, I'm, I'm a husband now. I was uh, very involved with Women's Council. I most recently was uh, RVP for Region 6 last year, which was Maryland, Delaware, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Um, I am currently running for NYSAR Secretary Treasurer for 2020, so I'm looking forward to continuing my service with NYSAR in whatever capacity they'll have me. Excellent. Okay. So we don't has been as a word we would never, but your 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 claim your rise to power. No, I don't want to say that. Your claim to fame, I guess. But let, let's start in the beginning because we all started somewhere. Uh, I'll introduce myself. Obviously, I'm Jeremiah J. Mamman. Are you tuning into my channel? But uh, I am a local director for my local board of realtors. I sit on that. I'm also a state um, director. And I started back in 2005 at the age of however old I was at the time. And uh, I had a manager at the time that, that said to me, you know what? I was complaining about something. And I'm sure like, we'll talk about how we both got started. But I was complaining about something, and he was like, don't complain unless you're going to get involved and do something about it, right? And that, that kind of resonated with me. Rob Reimer, if you're, I don't know if you watch this, but Rob Reimer was his name. Um, and that kind of was like, okay, I guess that makes sense. So let, let me get involved. What, what got you involved when you first started? When I first got um, in, started in uh, real estate was 2005 I got licensed and uh, it basically then all you had to do was have a business card to be able to make money because the market was so hot <laughs> totally. and then uh, you know we started heading into 2007 then 2008 um, where it became more challenging um, almost immediately I was pulled into women's council and told you know this is where you need to be um, so I got involved. I immediately sat on a committee. And from that committee, I moved up and I have held the position every year since uh, 2010. And I really enjoyed it. Um, it was one of the best things for my career. And having gone to the two state meetings, I knew I was going to be at the NYSAR meetings, and if I was going to be there, I'm the type of person that I'm going to make it worth it and go to everything and do as much as I can. So I signed up for committees at NYSAR, and I've been going to NYSAR meetings since 2010 as well, and uh, I've enjoyed it very much so. I've met people from all over the state, and Women's Council was really a good entry uh, for me into uh, state and local leadership. But let's say, you know, for like newer agents that might be watching this, because that's the question that I always get from folks. It's like, why, why, why do you waste your, you know, in their mind, they, get, they say waste your time, or why do you spend all this extra time doing thankless tasks when they don't see how, how much, because you, you get so much more out of it than you put in. But let, let's start in the beginning. So what if they're having a challenge like getting on a, even a local committee? Because I think that's probably the, the, the first place to start is your local board has committees. So start there or they have a woman's council or they have a young realtors network or young professionals network or anything. Start there. So 
if they're having trouble getting on committees, what's your advice for them there? I think they really don't even know what they're interested in until they actually go to a meeting. And then there's like different aspects of where they can get involved in. Um, there's YPN, there's different uh, international programs, um, you know, ARIA, just I know Staten Island does a fabulous job with their international exposium and symposium, whatever it is, but they do a fabulous job with that. And I think everyone has a different um, interest in, in real estate. So if you go to the state meetings, which are free, one's in Verona, New York, the other is in Albany. Next and week. Yes. And you just go to these meetings and there's just different uh, committees and they're all free and a lot of them are open. So you just sit in them and figure out what interest you have. I am a legislative junkie. I went to school for political science. So the natural fit for me was to get very involved with RPAC and po policy. I just, I love it. I can't get enough of it. So that was you know, where I naturally gravitated to. Um, I did uh, serve uh, communications and technology and PR and just different uh, committees that I ended up chairing because of the level of involvement that I was exposed to different committees. And until you go, you don't really know what's going to pique your interest, but I would highly encourage anyone drive in for the day, uh, you know, funk up with some other people who are going, but, but come and really just okay. see what it's all about. And you can't help but get interested after that. One other thing that I would highly encourage everyone to do at least once is lobby day. Mm -hmm. If you haven't been to lobby day, you are missing out. Um, lobby day has been, it's probably one of my favorite days of the year. And when you go to lobby day, you get the talking points, you find out what legislation is coming up um, and you get to actually talk to your representatives about how this legislation impacts your daily business. And people don't get involved or don't know. And what you don't know can be very dangerous. Um, can you imagine that they passed a law that said that you could only list or sell real estate in the zip code that you lived in? Um, that was a piece of legislation that came up and, you know, we fought and we we let it be known that this is not uh, good or conducive for us to make money in this profession. So it's something as small as that. Uh, one of the best things that I had seen happen was it started from New York is the second highest closing cost in the United States. Uh, we're right behind New Jersey. I think sometimes we flip flop back and forth. Um, and it's not um, affordable for people to buy homes here. And then they have to, you know, roll in closing costs into mortgage and making their payments higher. Then they incur PMI because they don't have enough money to put down. So it really is a snowball effect. And we got talking to um, our senators and um, we were saying, you know, something has to be done, you know, like they did with a college fund with a, you know, a tax-free savings account. And we went from every uh, legislator's office, one to the next to the next, and it really picked up steam. And eventually uh, they did co-sponsor a bill it passed unanimously in both um, houses. And then it went to Governor Cuomo's desk. He um, had a, a study done on it. And we expect for this bill to be signed, uh, hopefully this year. So it was really very interesting. I think it was maybe like a five year uh, yeah. time from when this was first introduced to when it actually uh, passed uh, both the, the House and the Senate and, you know, made it to the governor's desk. So w we really are looking forward to working with him and just watching this become a bell. And so just just to kind of backtrack a little bit for the folks who don't know what Lobby Day is, we're going to post in the comments the date. I think it's May, May 7th. 7th, I was going to say 6th or 7th yeah. uh, this year. But basically all any realtor from all across New York State, 
on this day, we all meet at the Capitol. Okay. We all meet and we're, we're, we're divided into our different real estate boards. And then we, we go and talk about a show of force. I mean, I, I think the, the last lobby day we had probably five or 600 people there. I want to say, right. I don't know the exact numbers, but enough people where they hear from us all day. Here comes the capital region, Jen, you know, Jennifer and her crew, they come in. Here comes, you know, greater Rochester. We come in and we're, you know, we're talking, to, we're their constituents. So we're, and we represent all of these people that we know in our communities. And so there's strength there when we're lobbying. That's why it's called lobby day. We're lobbying on behalf of home ownership because we're realtors and we care. It's not that, hey, we want to go there and like make sure we make money every day. Like it has to do with the stuff that impacts our industry and impacts our clients, which is, which is I think when they see how passionate we are and how we care, that's what really makes a difference. And they really are interested in hearing what we have to say, you know, we do have a few who um, are builders or uh, Betty Little is a realtor and they understand our causes, but a lot of um, people there don't. So they want to hear how this impacts our business and simple as um, the sprinkler law. When that came up, you know, it, it's different with uh, downstate versus upstate and rural versus urban and, you know, can you imagine if every new construction house um, that's on a well had to have a sprinkler system put in? And it, I think it was about $3,500. It's just not feasible. And you can't, the builder can't pass that cost off. Um, it's different when, you know, you're on public water or, you know, in a condo situation where they can put these up. But it just um, some things just don't make sense or they're there's uh, different issues that come up with insurance and liability. These houses are vacant and the sprinkler gets triggered and now you have a flood. Insurance companies were not too happy about this either. Right. So there's a lot of things that come into play. Well, let's go back to the committee involvement because I think, again, it starts in the local level and your local board. And I know I'm pretty sure your board is similar to ours and, and all across the, the state they're structured about the same more or less. And I'm not saying everybody has a standard of how the committees are because that there's no standard. But if you're interested in something, because it's hard from the descriptions to, to see, like you said, to understand exactly the tech committee. Okay, what do they do? They're, they do technology, but what does that mean? And then I think sitting in on a meeting and seeing like, you know, they, they review any new MLS changes that are coming up or they any issues with the internet or Authentisign or dot loop or whatever system you guys are using like you can be a part of the process of helping to uh get these products for your you know or if you're if you like professional development like you love education like both of us do that's a committee that i serve on this year and i help to kind of determine or help the, the rest of the committee determine what's going to be good education or what's not or how we can make things better or how we can get more people to classes um what are some of the other ones our pack we talked about Act, legislative policy, legislative policy. Um, um, professional standards and I think you know you always have the same core people who always volunteer um, and I think sometimes people shy away from stepping up and wanting to volunteer because they don't know enough but if you just call uh, the president of your association or ask anyone on your board there's a uh, past president CJ yeah. shout out um, if you just call someone on your board, they're always looking for volunteers. They always, always happy to have you. And, you know, they would be happy to talk to you, have the conversation and find out what a fit would be for you. And if you are intimidated by calling them, you're always welcome to call me. I will gladly tell you about the different committees that are out there and, you know, kind of help you find what would be a fit for you. So, uh, my number is 518-879-6318. Feel free to call me anytime, and I would be happy to have that conversation with you. Yeah, and I'll just echo that because it's – we know people throughout the whole state too. So if you're, like, intimidated by your local board or you don't know anybody or you're a new agent, we may know somebody on your local board, and we can help you. And let me just tell the story of how I got involved a little bit. We – they had put out a notice like they were looking for a local board of directors. And I want to make a difference. I want to get involved. 
And so when I went in front of, you know, you have to go in front of a committee that slates you, you know, or nominates you for this position. And they're like, oh, what, what committees do you serve on? And I'm like, zero. And they're like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, I, in this, this, at this point I had been in the business probably 2008, 2000. I'd been in the business probably four years. And they said, what do you mean you're not on any committees? How can you apply for this position? And I'm like, I have applied for, at, at first it was just tech committee. But then after that, I had applied for every committee just to see. I'm like, I will do anything. Just please give me a shot. And every single year I was turned down until I went in front of that committee and I mentioned something. And and Carolyn Stifler, if she's watching, she was uh, she was our president at the time. And she said, there's something we got to do about this. You know, and she tapped somebody on the shoulder and said, hey, we got to get somebody. This is somebody who wants to be involved and wants to make a difference. So I promise you, if you feel like they don't want me or you feel rejected, like we've all felt that way at some point, And there's always going to be somebody that can help you. You know, it's, it's not giving a hand out. It's giving a hand up and, and helping out your, your fellow agent that wants to make a difference. I 100% agree with you. And I had a similar um, situation where I was very involved with women's council. Lobby day was coming up. It was kind of like an exclusive group at, the, at that time who went to lobby day and represented you know, the Greater Capital Association of Realtors and uh, very few outside that group were um, invited to join. And Paul Simonic, who was, uh, I believe, the first male president of Women's Council in the Capital Region, uh, tapped myself and Brooke Hackler and said, why don't you ladies come with us to Lobby Day? And that was life changing. It was just uh, so great that we were invited um, they did show us the ropes, they took us around and I was hooked from there. So I gladly would, uh, encourage anyone if you want to get involved, um, I would be happy to, you know, show you around the NYSAR meetings, help you out, make sure you're getting with the right group at lobby day. Um, anything. Well, let's, since our, our, our original broadcast said leadership, committee involvement and volunteering. So I know you do a ton of volunteering and so do I, but why, why would, as a business person, how does volunteering help you? So my belief is that I really enjoy my profession. And if we don't look out for our profession and do more than just sell houses, we may not have a profession or it may be a very different profession than we um, have become accustomed to, and that affords us nice living. Um, there's just so many changes that are coming, you know, all the time with the World Wide Web, the internet, uh, just the way we do business now, e-signatures, it just, it, it's constantly changing. And I find volunteering on a professional level in an industry, um, committees that this helps me have a handle on what's coming down the pike and helps me anticipate it without getting anxious. So I find yeah. that it's so valuable to be involved because it's not scary. You know what's coming up, um, what to be on the lookout for and how you can either incorporate it into your business or how to adjust your business to deal with, and I hate this word, the disruptions, the disruptors, um, so that they're not so disruptive to your business. Myself, um, I just want um, to make sure that I know what's going to happen. So there, you know, I'm, I'm not like all of a sudden one day, like we can't conduct business the way we've been doing it. And I, I would say that that's why it's so important to be in the know. Yeah. And so let me just add on to that because, you know, I teach a lot of classes and especially with like social media and technology and people are like, well, I don't like to share my personal life and what I do. And there's just an example. I was at the Women's Council. Um, we had an event in the greater capital region there. And somebody asked me, like, I volunteer a lot. I'm a breast cancer survivor, and I volunteer a lot. I, do you think I should share that? And I'm like, absolutely. Like, this is people like people who are like themselves. And, and 
I always use this. This is the quote, one of the quotes I live by, but people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And they see that you're passionate about something and that she's a, she's a survivor, number one. There's other survivors that can automatically, there's a report there that nobody else will, will have. But also seeing that she's making a difference in the community. Like that weighs more to say you sell, how long you've been in the business, anything else that you can share with somebody. And, it, and you could kind of comment on this as well. That when somebody knows yeah. that care, everything else doesn't matter, right? Right. Go ahead. So I am a very private person. I, I know uh, some people find that funny. Um, you'll rarely, if ever, see me post anything about my husband. Yes, I am married. I'm happily married for 17 years. Um, but he is not a technology person. He's like, please don't put anything about me on Facebook. So I don't. Um, one of the most interesting experiences that I've had through women's council was my husband, um, was injured very, very badly in a motorcycle accident, um, in July of this last year. And I had a speaking engagement for women's council. I was actually supposed to be in, uh, Chicago to teach at their leadership 360 training. And I was trying to figure out how I was going to get there. And I was like, really going to go. My husband um, was in very, very bad shape. He was in the hospital. And at one point they were talking to me and they're like, Jen, you know, you really don't need to come and don't feel obligated. And I just felt so obligated to this group because they had done so much for me that I felt like I was letting them down. And they had paid to have me come into Chicago a couple of months earlier for train the trainer. And I felt like they just had invested so much in me and that it would just be very, um, you know, irresponsible of me and that I was going to let them down. And it was one of the hardest decisions I ever had to make. Um, and I know that may sound funny to some people, but yeah. I just love this group so much. This group had done so much for me and I just didn't want to let them down. Well, some things had changed with my husband. They were having a real hard time with pain management. Um, they didn't know if he was going to be able to keep uh, his hand. And then he started having some blood pressure issues. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, I can't leave. Like, this is really bad. So I called up and I said, you know, I'm so sorry to have to do this, but my husband and they were like, Jen, don't say another word. We got you covered. And within 24 hours, they had a girlfriend of mine from Seattle. Um, she covered me and they all reached out. They reached out to me through the whole time he was in the hospital. And you don't know you need uh, uplifting and encouragement and support until someone sends you a text, gives you a phone call, just reaches out for no reason to let you know that you're in their thoughts and prayers. And that helped more than I can say. And that is just a testament on how strong um, the relations you make with the Women's Council of Realtors are. And it also happened throughout NYSAR. Other realtors from you know, across the state reached out and said, hey, we're thinking of you. Um, I had flowers sent. Uh, edible arrangements, cookies, like it was just, it was cards, it was just visitors. Um, Dawn came up from Staten Island and popped in the hospital and it was just, just that support of my fellow realtor um, makes me want to make this profession better and to give back what I was given. So it's powerful stuff. Um, Let's talk about giving back. So, you know, people say, well, you're an educator, you're a trainer, you're a speaker, you're also involved with leadership. Like, let's put this out there. It's not a get rich quick. The reason why any of us speak and do the things we do is not for the money, period. Right? And it's not it's not for the travel because we'd much rather be home with our uh, families and making money. Right. I mean, let's, let's, say, oh, it's so great. You get to see all these different places. No, I get to see a lot of airports and a lot of, a lot of airplanes. Yeah. And I get to look out the window and go, oh, wow, that's nice. Look at Arizona. And they get back on the plane and come back home. Right. Like it's not what, what they think, but it's, it's really just like you said about making a difference in the industry, making, 
our fellow realtors better because somebody helped us along the way and said, hey, Jay or Jay, we're both Jay, um, Jennifer or Jeremiah, here's how you can do better. Here's how you should do better. And now we're just kind of passing it along. And I think that's our, it's our obligation. It's our responsibility, like you said. One of the things that I would uh, give as advice that I had done early in my real estate career was I, you know, you have to take so many hours of continuing ed. And I decided that I was going to take it in other areas other than the capital region. And I traveled to Rochester. I took classes there. I traveled to Staten Island. I got my CIPS designation there. I went to Long Island, got my green designation there. And having traveled to do these classes um, was awesome because I met new people, one. And number two, I found out how other markets were so different than mine and how um, what the average price of a house was, um, how they conducted business daily, what some of the... Um, problems that they faced in their market and some of the solutions that they had to overcome these obstacles and just we're all realtors but we all conduct business so differently i think the one thing that is the common tie is the code of ethics we all abide by the code of ethics so just having been able to expose myself to different markets was just a real amazing experience so i would highly suggest everyone take a class somewhere other than where you live right. and you know you don't have to come uh, upstate in the winter you can always do it in the summer and you know you can come to g car for a class during track season you'll you'll be doing all right yeah yeah absolutely and just to kind of piggyback on that same thing for me like some of the best relationships as far as real estate goes people that i can call and ask advice are all over the state yeah you know and and when we're dealing with markets like we've seen in the last couple of years where it's it's short on inventory and it's it, it can get crazy out there it's great to see what other markets bigger you know new york city you know talking about long island nassau suffolk staten island just that and then even you know the greater capital compared to rochester and how we do things differently or even when you're involved with leadership, seeing some of the challenges that people are facing in other parts of the state so that you can then prepare the local people that you represent or that you're trying to help out for, for what's coming, you know, like multiple offer situations or offer pre presentation confirmation forms or even marketing, just how like just, just different ways that they market homes in other areas, you know, like, wow, we don't do that here. I wonder why not. And would it work? and you give it a shot and you're the only person in your market doing it. Um, so th you never know what little gem you're going to bring back. And you may think it's going to be one thing and it may be something completely unexpected. Yeah, absolutely. So let's, and anything you want to say kind of, as we're starting to wrap up, we're getting around the 30 minute mark, I think. Let me just. Oh, yeah. uh, so one thing I do want to um, really talk about is just when you're involved, whether it's women's council on your, your local association, the state association, the competitive, we're competitive by nature, but the competitiveness that we are competing against each other goes away. And yeah. there's so much more collaboration. And, you know, there's just such um, a sense of, you know, where we're all in this together. And it really helps when you're facing something adversarial and you can reach out to someone across the sea and they know what you're talking about and you can commiserate about it and, you know, work through and come up with a solution to a problem. But on the hyper local level, if you're involved with women's council, if you're involved with your association and you have a multiple offer and that other person's name comes across the table and you know them personally, you're going to want to work with them and you know that the deal is going to go together smoother because you already know each other. Um, the egos fall, they fade, and it's really about two people who have a uh, working friendship relationship putting a deal together in the best possible way. Because if you both are fighting, 
your client doesn't win, their client doesn't win if you guys are fighting. But when you're collaborating to get the best deal for both sides and you're working together, the deal's going to go a lot smoother. So I found that in the past, when you get a text message from another agent and you're like, well, what did they mean by that? But if it's someone who you already know through committee work at your association or through YPN, you're going to pick the phone up and go, hey, I got your text. I'm, you know, what did you mean? And then you realize, oh, it was just a quick text. Maybe they were using voice to text and it came across weird. You know how emails are. Right. You read a tone that's not there. Um, and it's usually a reflection of what you have going on in your own life. That is the tone that you're reading an email that was sent to you. Sometimes they're not as snarky as you may have read them, but when you have that relationship with that agent uh, through volunteering, you're going to pick up the phone. You're going to make sure that deal goes together smoother. You're going to work harder together for a healthy deal. And I always feel that it's so important for us to have healthy deals so that the consumer, the public uh, recognizes us as being ethical people who conduct business in a healthy way that we're not all, you know, just trying to climb over each other's backs to get a deal done um, at right. the, you know, at the sacrifice of our good name and profession. Hey, let, let me just share a quick story because I'm so happy you brought that up. Um, I had a client recently, and you know when you're out showing houses, and we get into this house, and she looks at me, and she goes, she's uh, first generation. She makes shows, Jamon, I have to have this house. And I'm like, oh, don't put, you know, and it, this is low inventory market. I call the agent. She's like, yeah, offer just came in. Now, my client has a grant program. Okay, and, and not the terms and conditions, not the best that they could be. I'm not, I'm not dealing with like a cash buyer that's going to close in a, you know, in a couple weeks. I, I send the offer to the agent, somebody that I know from committee work, somebody who knows, you know, and, and you know, my, my father always told me this, like you, you can never, you can never put a price on your reputation. Like no transaction is worth that. And she says to me, you know, in her office, they're going, I can't believe you're taking that offer over the other one. It has a grant program, blah, 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 blah. And she says, no, this is Jeremiah's. I know that he'll get the deal done. Right. You know, because she knows me, she knows my personality, and she knows that I'm going to take care of the client always, right, and always be above board. And so now that client closed a couple weeks ago, okay, just because of the relationship that was built because of volunteering, because of committee involvement, because I wanted to give back. Like that's the powerful, it's not, I get another transaction. I'm, I'm going to have transactions regardless. It's the fact that I get to help somebody who's a first generation American who moved here from Jamaica, who grew up dreaming of owning a home in America, the, the American dream of home ownership. Now she does because of what we did, you know, because of the volunteering and because of the difference that we're making. And thank you for doing that. That's a beautiful story. And it's just so true because we have one thing in this business that you can't get back once you lose it, and it's your reputation. And it's just so important to never sell yourself short and never lose sight of your reputation and doing the right thing because once it's gone, it's gone. And you, just like when you go on a listing appointment and you tell the seller, hey, if it goes to multiple offer, we're going to look at all offers just because one is all cash and you know it doesn't make it the better right. offer so you know there's a lot of factors to consider and you know you have to go with your gut and you have to believe in your instinct but you also have to at all costs protect your reputation thank you yeah so again if, if you guys are watching this and and hopefully you're, you're getting a lot out of it and you're going to get involved Please reach out to Jennifer, reach out to myself, reach out to your local board, get involved. We're, we're here to help, whatever it is. And just, uh, I'm going to name a couple of the organizations. We have Women's Council of Realtors. We have Young Professionals Network or Young Realtors Network, depending where you are. We have the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals, NARAP. We have ARIA. We have um, so many more. I can't even name them all, but these are all organizations where it's competitors in theory. Uh, but everybody working together to help one, you know, help each other out. So don't, don't ever be intimidated. If you are contact one of us and, 
at any point. I know I've, I've known Jennifer now probably going on 10 years. Anytime I have a question, regardless of how busy you are, like you're, you're right there, psh, reply back, whether it's messenger, whether it's email, whether it's text. And so I just want to thank you for your time today. And I appreciate you so much. You do a very fine job of representing us. You um, do a wonderful job. Uh, it was great to see you in action at Triple Play. And that just is on a whole nother level. So thank you for representing us so well here in New York State. It's very appreciated. And I enjoyed uh, being on the tech panel with you at NYSAR. That was an awesome event. Good job, CJ. That really was, uh, I, the feedback from that was just great that everyone got a little something out of all the speakers. Yeah, absolutely. So in closing, volunteer, get involved, make no excuses. We're going to post in the comments below when lobby day is and how to get involved with that. Uh, but thanks again, Jennifer. And thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Have a great day.